We've got a few little quick announcements for you. Donnell's going to share with you. I'm going to take this thing off. Come here. Hey. I think the And tonight we have family communion and Ooh. hope letters from 6 to 7 15 but make sure that you sign up in the foyer so uh the increments are every five minutes but we'll you know if you don't if you want to then mark off too <laughs> you got a big group um Wednesday night, no Wednesday night service this week. We will have our watch night service Thursday night. We're serving dinner. We're going to have two episodes of The Chosen. And uh, we'll pray in the new year. Um, up here on the front, you'll see the commun communion table. If there is a need that you want us to pray through uh, for you or with you Thursday night, write it, you take a card, write it in there, um, and leave it on the table. And then we went through. Thursday night when we have watch night service, we're all going to go through. We'll spread them out along everywhere and just pray through them. That's part yeah. of our goal for Thursday night. Um, intercessory prayer night will be the last Wednesday night in January. Uh, so if you have any requests for that, these will also be kept and used for that as well. So we will mm -hmm. pray through them multiple times through the month of January. All right, well, um, and I just want to say this being our last Sunday service of 2020, um, I know, oh, <laughs> hallelujah, uh, this year comes to a close, um, but, you know, as we have still so much to be thankful for, and as we look forward to 2021, um, you know, I was sharing with Nana yesterday in this conversation, you know, there were so many, there's so many prophets, if you will, that have been on the internet. I heard everything from, well, most all of them was doom and gloom. I mean, if you, if you listen to them, one, one in particular, and I'm not just out there just searching this kind of stuff, but one in particular was talking about that we were going to see mass riots and famines and stuff by, by November of this year. And, and I just, in my spirit, just something, you know, the Lord was just like, <laughs> and, I, and I think this kind of premise for what God was sharing with this message today. God, yes, God has poured out his wrath in the past. God has, um, you know, announced judgment on his people. Um, as good parents should, if you had let a child just go crazy, if you will, just let them run, run the muck of the house uh, and don't discipline them, then it's just going to be mass chaos. And a good father, as God is, disciplines us. He corrects us. Um, and I know that there's been a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty in 2020. And, but in my spirit, God is still a father. He is still a father. And he still loves us. And it's not just to destroy us and to, to, to just crush this world. Nothing has changed the love of of God for you and I. Nothing has changed or diminished His love for you and I. And yes, there may be times that we feel that God is correcting us, and He should. But we as His children should listen and obey. Scripture says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and then watch that last part and heal their land. their land and so church I know that there's a lot of voices out there going on there's a lot of things on the media and a lot of things on the news and you can get overwhelmed overwhelmed this year I think has been the sense of the word but God wants to remind us as his children he is still on the throne. He is still sovereign and he is still in control. That this earth is his and the fullness thereof, the scripture says. 
So as long as we keep walking in Him, as long as we put our trust in Him, and as long as we look to Him, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. Can you say amen to that? The Lord has given me two words for 2021, and it's abundance and expectancy. We will not abound until we expect. Come on. And when we expect, we have to be in His Word. And I want to challenge you next Sunday, next Sunday, the 4th, the first Sunday of 2021 to be here. Are we live yet? Okay. Hey, y'all, I want you guys here next Sunday. If you live somewhere else and you're not in the Monroe area, just tune in with us next week because we're going to do something next week that's been in mind and Joe's hearts for years. And we've done it and we've seen God move. And that's um, declarations and proclamations of God's word. We believe not that he has given us a special, Joe, I've given you this. It's only for you. It's not just for me. It's the word of God. And so when we speak the word of God, y'all think about it. When we speak the word of God, whose breath are we using? Where do we get our breath? God gave us that breath, right? So when we speak the word of God, we're not speaking it in our own excuse me, in our own uh, power. We're speaking it with the power of God, His breath. And so next Sunday, we're going to do some read-throughs and we're going to do some proclamations of God's Word straight from Scripture. And that's going to be our our standpoint through 2021 so that we can expect abundance. And I believe that God's going to deliver that in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. And I just want to thank you uh, again for your faithfulness to the house of God, to the ministry. And and we, and we Sister Amanda, that morning we had that service, that move of God. I didn't know who was singing, change is coming, change is coming. And then later Donnie was like, yeah, that was Amanda. I thought it was Donnie up there singing. Um, but I'm going to tell you, guys, change is coming. And the scripture says that God's doing a new thing And I know I've heard different people say, well, he was just talking about Israelites and this and that. But let me tell you, God, (laughs) God is a creative God. And he is so powerful. We we can't even fathom the fullness of our God. Y'all have no idea what he has in store for you. But we have to plug in. We have to start looking to him. And this coming year, if you're looking for change, you're looking for something new in your life. If you're looking for certainty then you can go no further than looking to God's Word and the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change your life forever. And I know in my spirit, this is my word of proclamation, that God is doing something new in our lives in this coming year. And even though we may be looking and saying all these things that happen, all these bad things, but I'm going to tell you that God is bigger than all this other stuff. And I think he's allowed these things to happen in our lives to wake us up and to and just have a sense that we need him more today than we ever have, yeah. ever. Amen? Amen? And so I want to challenge you like Sister Donnie has, be here and make a commitment this coming year. I know there's going to be a lot of New Year's resolutions. Make this resolve in your heart. I will not forsake the gathering ourselves together. I will not forsake the Word of God, and I will not forsake seeking Him and drawing close to Him, because you can never lose when you do that. Right, right. You can never lose when you right. do that. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, we get there. Brother Russell, Brother Charlie, we're going to receive our morning tithes and offering. And as we uh, move into a time of worship, if you have a prayer need, a prayer request of those online, type that in to our media support team, and they'll be here. We'll have someone pray over that need. And also, if you want to share a need for us to pray over the watch night service, something that you need an answer from God on, send that in, and we'll put that on the table. We'll pray over that New Year's Eve night into the new year. Amen. And, uh, and if you have a, a need here in this church, we need to pray for you. Um, during worship, come up and we'll pray for you at that time. Uh, Brother Russell, will you go ahead and pray over the tithe and offer this morning? Thank you. Thank you. Come on, church, let's stand and worship Jesus this morning. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, Lord, hallelujah. Same old voice tell the same old lies. If 
you're trying to fill the same old holes inside there's a better life there's a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way maker if you need freedom or saving he's a prison shaking savior if you got chains he's a chain breaker We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight We've all run to things we know just ain't right And there's a better life There's a better life If you got paid He's a pain taker if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel that, come on and testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel that, come on and testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel that, come on and testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains. He's a chain breaker.
overcome that covers me when I kneel down at your feet it's a place of healing it's a place where I find freedom there's a place my eyes can't see it's where my spirit longs to be it's a place of healing it's a place i'll live in freedom so i'm gonna lift my hands till i can reach heaven i'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy At the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship There's a love inside of me It's for you, Lord, my Savior King It breaks the sin that's binding Leads me to a place of freedom So I'm gonna lift my head I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship There's no one Who can bring me peace Who can wash me clean like you, Lord There's nothing In this world that can free me Oh, you saved my soul So I'm gonna lift my I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sit my hands Till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name i've come to worship i've come to worship i've come to worship There's no one who can bring me peace, who can wash me clean like you, Lord. There's nothing 
in this world that can free me oh you save my soul so i'm gonna lift my hands Till I can reach heaven, I'm gonna shout your name. Till the walls come falling down, I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed. I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship. I've come to worship I've come to worship I've come to worship Church, would you just lift your hands this morning? That stanza says, I lift my hands to heaven. The scripture records time and time again that worship led to victory in battle. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we find that the nation of Israel <laughs> was facing a great battle. <laughs> but the worshipers were sent out ahead of the army and the scripture records that they believed in their Lord Jesus Christ and he established them. He established them. He established them. They listened to the prophets and they were successful. They succeeded. This morning, the Lord wants to remind you that it is impossible to please him without faith. And as an act of faith, there may be something you're struggling with. Something's holding on to you. Something's been hindering you. Something's been binding you. Something has been just tormenting you through this year. Maybe in the past years, and you've had held on to it, in fact, some of you for a decade or more. And the Lord says, I want you to take a step of faith. <laughs> be like them. You may think, what good is it going to do to step into muddy waters to heal my leprosy? But God is saying to you, what is it going to hurt to take that step of faith? What do you got to lose? But the leprosy, Esther took a step of faith and prepared a meal, but led to the salvation of the entire nation of her people. As we sing this this morning, I lift my hands. I want that to be your declaration. I want that to be your step of faith. I want you to reach up and say, Lord, I'm reaching up to you this morning. I am going to worship you in the face of this battle. I release my faith. It may be some time that you have actually tried in faith to do something. But God says, do not give up on me faith is real faith is more real than you are right here in this sanctuary and the Lord says trust me so I want as an act of faith this morning church and you online this is for you too I want you to reach your hands up to heaven as we sing this stanza and let it go Lord, I, I lift my hands. I cast my burdens upon you because you care for me. And Lord, if there's, any, if there's any unforgiveness in my heart, I pray. I pray today I forgive. I forgive and I release the people that I'm holding, harboring uh, ill will and hurt. You don't have the right to hold on to hurt. Let it go and release yourself from that burden. Right now, I want you to visualize that. And I want you to lift it up to God right now. 
right now. Let's sing that together. It's an act of faith this morning. Let's have I'm freedom. Gonna I'm going to lift my, my hand. hand. Reach to heaven today. I can reach heaven. Give it to God. I'm going to shout your name. When you get your victory, start shouting the to the Lord. Walls come falling down. Thank him now come for the victory. To worship. Glory, hallelujah, I'm glory, to hallelujah. Worship. You're worthy, worthy, worthy I'm to be praised. Come on, church. Song. Let it go and let I him take over. Shame. Let him have his I'm will and his way. It's too much for them. It's too much for you. But God says nothing is impossible with him. I come to worship in the day, Lord. Lay it down in this big church. Let him have the praise that's in your heart this morning. Release it to God. Release it today. Holy Spirit, move in this place right now. The act of faith. Touch and minister and heal. Release right now. Right, right now, Lord. The finances and provisions that people are needing to lack in their life. The worry of a lost loved one. Call them to you, Lord. It's not our battle, it's yours, Lord, and the victory is ours because we're laying down at your feet. Shout Shout it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to worship, and you come to worship in this morning, church. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm going to shout your name. Till the walls come fall. In this place, up. church. Come to worship. Kill a bush when I come by show. Worship. Kill a hana. I'm gonna sing my song. Kill to shuna kana ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy. worthy. At the mansion. The victory is ours because of our God on the throne. Hallelujah. We will succeed. Worship. Hallelujah. Come on, church, let's give him praise this morning. The victory is given to us. The victory is ours. Victory. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, my, my, my. My, my, my. Yeah. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Glory. Loosed, released. Set free. Loosed. Released. Set free. Be loosed. Be set free of the things that hold you. You are set free through my son. It's time for you to claim what I have already given. You celebrated Christmas and accepted gifts this week, yet you have not accepted the gift that I have given you. Be loosed. Be set free. Be released. Glory. I told the Lord not too long ago that I didn't want to give any more messages that were chastising. 
And he says, that's not for you to decide. Mm. Are you needing to be loosed this morning? Are you needing to be released? To be set free? It doesn't have to be drugs and alcohol. It doesn't even have to be a sin to everybody else, but it's something the Lord has told you to stay away from, yet you have not. Is he speaking to you this morning? Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the promise of release. I pray that we can walk in that faith and that victory. We wait before you today. You may be seated. Do y'all hear it? Thank you, worship team. Do y'all hear that this morning? Listen. That that still, small voice. I'm telling you, church, God is speaking in this place. It's the last Sunday of 2020. And maybe what the Lord is laying on in this worship service, it is coming to the close of this year. It's the last Sunday of this year. Maybe this should be the last day that you struggle with these things in your life. We have dealt with things all year long. We've heard of people struggling all year long. But the Lord is reminding us this morning in that still, small voice, I'm still God. I'm still here. I have not gone anywhere. There's some things we feel like we don't have a choice in. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for the salvation, the plan of salvation. Lord, your word says that even in death, a child of God is still alive. And you are the resurrection, Lord, and we thank you for that. Is there anybody else that want to share a testimony this morning? I just feel like we just need to pause here for just a moment. I don't want to rush. I don't want to rush the Holy Spirit. Okay. I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Luke. Book of Luke, chapter 2. We've been talking this entire month about far unto us out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. 
And the angel says, for unto us a child is given, a son is born. And we want to continue in that. Today we're going to talk about God's consolation. God's consolation. Before we read the word, let me just pray over the reading. Father, we thank you that you give us ears to hear and eyes to see. And I pray, Lord, today you'd open our hearts to receive your word and receive your message. And God, to thank you for your activeness and act- actively moving in our lives. And Lord, being involved and being concerned. And in even the day-to-day works, Lord, that we have to do. And God, you have not forgotten us. You've not forsaken us. And Lord, you certainly have a hope and a future for us. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're ministering and moving in this place, even right now that we don't even see it happening, but Lord, you're working things out. And God, we know it's going to be for your testimony, for your glory. And I pray, Lord, you would anoint me to preach this word today, unchecked, unhindered from any outside force. Let my lips of clay speak your truth and excellence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 2. And we're going to start in verse uh, 25 and read through 35. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple And when his parents brought in Jesus, the child, to do uh, do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There are three points I want to bring out from the scripture this morning as we wrap up this Christmas series on Foreign to Us. And the first is that scripture just states Foreign to Us that Jesus brings consolation. Uh, What is consolation? Um, It's not a group of stars, right? (laughs) Don't confuse that. But see, when Mary and Joseph went to the temple in Jerusalem to follow the requirements of the law after the birth of Jesus, they met Simeon. A man, as the scripture says, was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. The consolation of Israel refers to the promised Messiah. And the nation had been waiting. God had been silent up to this point. Until the great announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ, saying to the shepherds in the fields, and the star shining in the heavens to guide the wise men. Now we don't know the, the exact particulars of timing, of how long things transpired in those days how long the star shone in fact recently we had our own star christmas it was a little bit of excitement about the planets of jupiter and saturn aligning and their their light to shine even brighter and i think it just served as a reminder to the world there was a lot of buzz on the internet about the christmas star it's the christmas star maybe it's the same star that that the wise men saw in the night sky But we know that Christmas star, though, didn't happen for just a moment in time. They looked at the stars. They studied the stars. They would have seen planets moving in the constellation. I believe God created that star to announce Jesus, my son, my begotten, beloved son, has arrived on the scene. 
And this world will never, ever be the same again. And so, consolation of Israel refers to the promised Messiah, God among us, the Emmanuel. Consolation means to console. It is a means to alleviate grief or to take away a sense of loss or trouble. That's Jesus. The Messiah, the consolation of Israel, was to remove the sorrow and the comfort of the nation. Simeon and generations before him waited for the coming of the one who would console God's people. My goodness. Isaiah predicted that the Messiah would take on the ministry of consolation. Isaiah chapter 40, if you want to turn there and read that for yourself, verses 1 and 2. It proclaims comfort, comfort my people. Anytime you see two words back to back, that's an emphasis. It's like putting an exclamation point on it. Comfort my people, says your God. God is your consolation. He is your comforter. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for. God revealed to Simeon that he would not see death until he beheld the Lord's Christ in Luke chapter 2 and verse 25. Sometimes we as Christians will say, well, the Lord told me this or the Lord revealed to me that. And there may be some people in this world who struggle with this. But even this morning in the service, the Lord may have shown something to you. The Lord may have revealed something to you in your spirit. That still small voice. As it illustrated in the scripture, he wasn't in the fire, he wasn't in the wind, he wasn't in the earthquake. But yet, he was in that still small voice. I think it's no mistake that the scripture says, that God had told Simeon he wouldn't die. He wouldn't taste death. He wouldn't see death until he saw the Messiah. And the scripture says that he was a righteous man, a devout man, and filled with the Holy Spirit. We know that the Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. Pentecost had not happened yet. Jesus is a baby. A baby. <laughs> I'm pointing down here, but a baby. And yet, the scripture says Simeon being full of the Holy Ghost. See, in the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost moved upon people for purposes, for reasons, to carry out his work, to anoint for purposes and plans. And Simeon is no different in this part of Scripture. He is anointed with the Holy Ghost so that he can hold the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Messiah, the risen and only King that is going to come and save mankind from the sins. And God said, you're not going to see death until you see the Messiah. <laughs> There may be something that the Lord has showed you and shown you that he's made a promise to you and you're long waiting for that promise to come true. The scripture says that God is long-suffering. He's not slack to his promises. And the Lord wants to remind you today that if the Lord has made a promise to you, he does not break his promises. The world would say, Simeon, you're getting old, man. You're going to die. And, and this whole notion of you seeing the Messiah, get out of here. It doesn't say that Simeon was wavering on his faith on that. He knew. The Holy Spirit was on him so that you and I would have confirmation and fact to know that he held the Messiah. After all those years of waiting and praying for the consolation of Israel, God, God allowed Simeon to hold the Messiah in his arms. And when you hold, when you hold a baby in your arms, I want you to think about this. When you hold a baby in your arms 
a lot of times, at least for me, I think to myself, I wonder, what are you going to grow up to be? I wonder if you're going to be president one day. I wonder if you're, if you're going to find a cure to cancer. You're going to be a great businessman or woman. In that baby is so much promise, isn't it? So much wonder. So much hope. And that's just with a regular baby. <laughs> Simeon is holding God incarnated in his arms. He knows what the hope is in this child. He knows the future of this child. Forget president. He's Messiah. He's our coming king. He's our redeemer. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's the promised child. He's the one. There's no guesswork in this one. And the Holy Spirit is there to confirm for Simeon, to confirm for you. He is. The great I am. He is. Hallelujah. Throughout their history, the people of Israel suffered greatly. They lived under slavery in Egypt. They endured decades of exile. They were were currently laboring under the rule of Rome. They were desperate for need of some consolation. That nation needed consoling. Many in Israel thought that the Messiah, the consolation of Israel as it was called to them, would bring the political and national freedom. And we see that in John chapter 6 and verse 15. We see another count of that in Luke 19 11. Because they're thinking that Jesus is going to overthrow the Romans and crush the rule of the empire. But the consolation Jesus brought was better than any political freedom. He could have provided, he, he gave them spiritual freedom. He gave them forgiveness of sin. He gave them opportunities for you and I today, church, that we might be facing an imminent event in our life, and yet, at any time, just like the thief on the cross, hanging there to his death, he turns to Jesus and says, you know, what do I got to lose? If you're this Messiah guy, will you remember me when you get to your paradise, when your kingdom? That's all it took. That's all it took. Jesus said, this day, this day you will live with me in paradise. Hallelujah. Comfort. Comfort in the midst of the worst circumstances that that thief could ever imagine. Comfort on that cross. Because Jesus hung in that middle cross. You and I have comfort in our lives because of Christ. Amen? Amen. David described the guilt of his own sin in this way. He says, my guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and I'm brought very low. All day long I go without mourning and I'm feeble. I'm utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. David wrote that in Psalm 38 verses 4 through 8. The son of David came to bear the burden away and to lift us up where we're bowed down. He replaces anguish with joy. Isaiah wrote it this way, I give you beauty for ashes. Oh my goodness. When you're looking at a pile of ashes, that tells me there's absolutely nothing, nothing left. God says when you have absolutely nothing left but just the view of ashes of what used to be, your hopes and dreams and aspiration, all of the pile of rubble and just powder, maybe even smoldering, God gives you joy for that. You can turn that in for his joy. All who trust in him know that he is truly the consolation of Israel. And why is that important, Brother Joe? Because not only was it the consolation, the Messiah for Israel, but he came for you and I as well, for the world, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You and I, ta-da, we're on this world. Everybody, Jew and Gentile alike. And so that means God gave us consolation for everyone who believes in Jesus. Jesus, number two, Jesus brings salvation, revelation, and glory. Not only does Jesus bring consolation and peace to hurting people, he brings salvation, revelation to the Gentiles, and glory to his chosen people. Luke chapter 2, in verse 30 and 30 through 32, says, For my eyes, he's praying, have seen your salvation. Verse 31, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, all peoples, everyone. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. You and I are no longer in the dark. And glory of the people of Israel. Jesus' purpose for coming here was to save the souls of all peoples. This is why, church, the Assemblies of God is, is really a missions organization. We're not just, we're, you know, we're like, we're a denomination, the Assemblies of God. We are, we are a missionary organization under the title of the Assemblies of God. We assemble under God for the purpose of the Great Commission, to go and tell all those peoples about Jesus. For uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, we find in verse 8 through 10, But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years. Don't ask me to explain that. He's God. If we can explain God, we don't need to worship him. He's God. Sometimes you just got to accept things by, oh, what's that word? Faith. Oh, yeah, that's right. But think about that. God's above time. You and I got these things right here because we're in it. He created this thing called time. He's above it. Time doesn't apply to him. He made it. (laughs) How could a thousand years be a day? He's God. He can make it a second if he wanted to. Right? And a thousand years is one day. Verse 9, the Lord is, listen to this. We think about God taking his time. You know, why is God, why hasn't God hadn't answered my prayers yet? Verse 9, the Lord is not select concerning his promise, as some might count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, Betty, but that all should come to repentance. That's what it's all about. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord, the great and terrible day of the Lord is coming, y'all. It will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat, but the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. The day of the Lord is coming. I'm not trying to sound like some of these people on the internet with their prophecies and so forth. The way you know a prophet is real is if a prophecy comes to pass. Otherwise, they're a false prophet. Unless the Lord discerns it to you. But I'm telling you, the scripture says the day is coming. This earth, everything we're working and trying to do, and stay is wrote in Ecclesiastes, God gives us things down here to do, keep us busy while we're waiting. It's like the like the uh, magazine, or used to be a magazine doctor's office, just give you something while you're waiting. We're literally waiting for this day to come. But we're not just sitting passively going by, are we? What are we doing? We're telling others about Jesus. We're telling others about Jesus so they can have that moment of consolation. They can have that moment of time that they too can know the Messiah. That they too can be a righteous man and woman. That they can be in right relationship with God. So the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. Nobody knows when. Only God in heaven knows when that day is coming. 
And we've said it before, today we're closer today than we were yesterday or last week. But see, Jesus was the divine revelation of God. When the announcement of Jesus' birth on this earth came, church, it was with great joy. What was it that the angel said? Fear not, I bring you tidings of great joy. Not just joy, great joy. Jesus came as a revelation, not only as a a consolation, but a revelation of God. Until this time, mankind only knew what the prophets had written, and even then it was mysterious. Only then they could only guess and hope at what the future would hold. And now Jesus himself, the fulfillment of those prophetic words, arriving on the scene with angelic host saying, I bring you tidings of great joy. There's some good news, people. Jesus is on the scene. Jesus is now going to comfort you. Jesus is paving the way for the Holy Spirit to come into this world as promised by the prophet Joel. Amen? The the angels announced it. John the Baptist proclaimed at his baptism that he is the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. And even in Luke chapter 2, Simeon not only gives thanksgiving and blessing, but in verses 36 through 38, a prophetess, a lady, a woman, a prophetic person, servant of God. You know, most people are like, well, you know, women... Women, uh, you know, can't really be used of the Lord. Well, let's look at that. Luke chapter 2. A prophetess, Anna. My mama's name. Beautiful name. Anna gave thanks and spoke of him. Why would, why would the Bible, why would Luke stop all this stuff about Simeon and just all of a sudden break into, and then there's Anna, a widow, who's given her, devoted her life to the temple and serving God and fasting. Look what she's fasting and praying, serving God. And look how God honored her. She got to see the Messiah too. What does Simeon and Anna now produce for us? In a court of law, you need some witnesses. We have now witnesses that the Messiah (laughs) is here. Is now fulfilling the prophetic word that this is now coming to pass. And he's praying a prayer of blessing over the child and praying a prayer of blessing over Mary and Joseph. Jesus reveals to disciples and us the identity that he is the truth, the life, and the way. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 10, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. They believed in God, and now Jesus is saying, believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. For you. For you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, glory, hallelujah, there you may be also. (laughs) And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And Thomas said to him, good old Thomas, Lord, we don't know where, where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. The Father is revealed through Jesus. Verse 7, it says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord... Here we go again. Show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you have not known me, Philip? 
He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father in me? And look at this, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But it's the Father who dwells in me does the work. Church, is no different for you and I today. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You and I today should say, follow me as I follow Christ. Because it is God the Father who is in us, the Holy Spirit that is in us, that is doing the work. I know sometimes we may feel like, uh, well, I can never witness. I can never tell people my testimony. I, can, I, I don't know if I can do all these things. But the good news is it is the Father who is, it's his work. It's his calling. It's his, it's his divine revelation. And the Holy Spirit through us will work through us. He's not calling us to do this in all, our own might and power. In fact, Paul says that those who are called to do work do it with the strength that God gives you. So we're not even expected to do it in our own strength. But we are expected to, I don't know, load up with this. To study, to show ourselves approved, to, to rightly divide the word of truth. But what Jesus is telling us in the scriptures and about himself, who he is, his nature. I am in the temple when he's being held in Simeon's arms. Jesus is telling his disciples, I am. The same I am that spoke to Moses in the desert. The same I am that when we stand before him at the end of times, and we're going to stand before him, church, Every knee, every tongue will be before him. The knees will bow. The tongues will confess. If you don't believe here, I can guarantee you, you're going to believe there. But if you're there and you become a believer, I hate to tell you, it's too late. Now, now, right now, is the time for salvation. Not tomorrow. Now is the time to act. Now is the time to seek him. Now, church, is the time to confess him. Now is the time to serve him. Now is the time to confess him. Now is the time to serve him with all of your heart. Put the past things behind you. And press on, as Paul says, to the prize that lays before you. And then he sends us the Holy Spirit is prophesied in old. And that same Holy Spirit that's ushered in the book of Acts. And guess what? He's still working today. He's still working actively in this world today. Third thing, Jesus was destined to suffer. There's this kind of a part of the prayer that Simeon's praying over Joseph and Mary and kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit. Verse 34, and said, and Simeon blessed him and he said, Mary, his mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. What? You have to do a little digging. But there's some great warning for Mary. This child that Simeon is holding and blessing in the temple that day, great promise to the world, as it were, also is destined for great suffering. There is a price to pay for you and my sin. Somebody didn't say, you know what, we'll just write that off. And Where does that go? There's a price to be paid. There's a penalty that is owed to sin. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul, Mary. The sufferings and death of thy son shall deeply affect thy soul. And if Mary had not been thus forewarned and sustained by strong faith, she could not have borne the trials which came upon her. But God prepared her for it. The Holy Mother, 
the dying Savior was sustained by faith. Remember, even in the Christmas play, we read the scripture where it says, and Mary pondered these things. She kept them in her heart. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, when Simeon prays his prayer over him, that Joseph and Mary ponder these things in their heart with fear and trembling. There is this, we know who he is, but yet you read in chapter 2 a little further, and when Jesus is older, he's, they, they, they leave the city, and he's back at the temple teaching the teachers. And when they came back, and Mary's like, what'd you do this for? And he said, don't you know, I was supposed to be about my father's work. And they both, again, were astonished at Jesus' sayings. I mean, I don't know, human nature to me is fascinating, isn't it? We have these great moments of angels showing up and wise men bringing gold and frankincense and myrrh and, and, and uh, angel literally telling Mary, you're going to have the Son of God. And then later, just a few short periods later, she's marveling at these sayings of Jesus. She knows why he's here. And the prayer of Simeon is warning Mary, your son, your baby, this child you're going to love and hold and nurture and care for on this planet is destined to suffer a horrible death. But it's to happen. It's got to happen, Mary. You can't protect him from it, Mary. You can't stop it from happening, Mary. It's, it must happen. And Simeon is praying a prayer of blessing, oddly as it sounds. So that Mary will be sustained. God himself with Mary. If you fast forward to the day of the crucifixion. Jesus hanging on the cross. Beaten, sped upon. They, 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 they um, gambled over his clothing. Mocked, ridiculed. Take yourself down, king of the Jews. Put a crown of thorn on his head. He was born for that purpose. And yet Jesus hanging on that cross. Go look it up in the scripture. Jesus looks down at the cross at his mother Mary. And the disciples standing beside him and says, behold your mother. He still had enough time in all of his suffering to make sure his mama was taken care of. He foretold her of the suffering that Jesus was going to have to undertake. But you know why? It's for you and I. It says, and that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Listen to this. This is connected with the preceding verse. He shall be a sign and a conspicuous object to be spoken against. That the thoughts of many hearts may be made manifest. That is, that they might show how much they hate holiness. Nothing so brings out the feelings of sinners as to tell them about Jesus Christ. Don't believe me? I don't know. Just go somewhere that is not a very godly place and just start talking to them about Jesus Christ. You'll find out how quickly the world hates Jesus. But on the flip side of that, that same Christ that is built upon for the church is that also that stumbling block for the world. He's on both sides of this conspicuous situation. He's a consolation, yes, to the church, but he's a reconciliation for the world to God. He reconciles the sinner to God. He makes a way where there is no way. Many treat Jesus with silent contempt, and many are ready to gnash their teeth, and many curse him. All show how much the nature of the heart is opposed to Jesus. And him knowing this, he still came anyway. He still came anyway. In essence, Jesus came and died on the cross and defeated death. He defeated hell and he defeated grave. So that you and I can live a life 
here more abundantly. Is it the life you dreamt of? Maybe not. But if it's in him, it's the greatest life you could ever experience, ever hope to have. The most fulfilling, most joyful life. And other people may look at you and go like, why are you so happy? I have the joy of the Lord. Ah, you're crazy. <laughs> no, I'm not. But see, there's a truth in here. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and guess what? Forever. He is the same. That means as we come into 2021, we can take comfort in Christ, knowing that He is our salvation. He is our hope. He is our source. He is our strength. He is our salvation. He is our provider. He is still King of kings and Lord of lords. He is our coming King and Lord. The future and its uncertainty doesn't diminish God's purpose. It doesn't diminish God's power. The present and its circumstances we live in today does not frustrate God one bit. And it does not offset his plans for your life. And the past, oh, the past. <laughs> the past does not discourage God. Your past does not distract God one bit. In fact, God in his power can take your pile of sins and your ugliness of your life that you've made a mess of your life and he can throw it over behind his back. The word says that he puts it in the sea of forgetfulness. He separates your sin as far as the east is from the west and I'm going to tell you those line, that line does not intersect ever again. They only go further and further and further and further and further. I don't see it no more. Never to be seen again, children. One final thing that you and I have also received from our Savior is his peace. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. As we look to another year, 2019, going into 2020, we had no idea. But can I tell you all something? Every year, we have no idea. Why should this year have been any different? Why should 2021 be any different? Why should we put our hope in Washington? Why should we put our hope in a political party? Why should we put our hope in some sort of security within our homes? Why should we put our rest and, and hope in some sort of protocols or procedures? Jesus never changes. God's plan hasn't changed. His calling on your life is still the same today. The clock is still ticking for you and I. But he wants you to realize, coming into a new year, that God says in his word, take heart. Be of good courage. It says that every day, the benefits of God are renewed. Not once a year, but every day. Every day. Yesterday is yesterday. Today is a new day. And as we said this morning, today is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be, be made glad in it. When I walked in this room this morning, it was a little chilly. I want you to think about this long-suffering God of yours and mine. 
what we consider slack. God is not. I walked in this room this morning, it was a little chilly. I walked in the fellowship hall, it was a little chilly. I walked in Martha's office, it was really chilly. There's some little boxes on these walls. I don't know if y'all have ever seen them or not. They're called thermostats. And you punch a little button on it, and you set that thermostat. The Lord wants me to tell you that you've had your thermostat on grief and despair and fear for too long. The Lord wants you to be reminded that you need to set your thermostat on today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice Oh, and let me set that on and be glad in it. Let me tell you, when I set those little thermostats and I put it on hold, that sets that temperature on that thermostat. Now, did the room get warmer immediately? Nope. But you know what? The environment eventually changed. God wants you to remember that your present circumstance does not frustrate him. He's not caught off guard by it. He's not surprised by what's happening in our lives. But he wants us to set our emotional thermostat to that of joy, to that of thanksgiving, to that of saying, Lord, in this day, I know that your grace is sufficient for me. That according to my God's riches and glory, he shall meet all my needs, right? Not what this world's telling. I've just stopped watching the news. I'm like Smith Wigglesworth. I just throw that thing out and just start reading this thing. And you know what? I set my thermostat to what this thing says. And it's amazing. It is amazing, church, that eventually... Wait a minute. That thing I was praying about, that thing that I was so... Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? It's, it's not even an issue anymore. <laughs> God will change our environment if we set our focus on him. Think about that. The next time you punch a button or set your dial on that thermostat, ask yourself, where's, where's my dial at? Do I get up in the morning and say, today is the day the Lord's made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. It's a choice. You may not feel like it. There's days we all get up and we just don't feel too rejoiceful. (laughs) There's some days we don't feel too comforted. We're human. This stuff right here, it gets tired, it gets hungry, hangry sometimes. We get frustrated. We, get, we, we want to we self-preserve. We want to protect ourselves, take a step back. But God has called us coming into this new year, church, to be fearless for him. Yes. To charge ahead because time is short. And you, you and I are called we got specific work to do. And he wants you to forget all this other stuff in the past. Put yesterday behind you. Don't bring yesterday into today. Don't bring the future into today. I heard it all saying one time, it says that the past is the past. And the future is tomorrow, but today is called the present. And that's why it's a gift from God. Today, you're taking a breath. You're filling your lungs, your heart's beating. But guys, we're not promised tomorrow. We have to live this day as if today was the last Sunday of 2020. Oh, it is. But you know the reality of it? If, if, if we live long enough, to see the coming of the Lord, we're going to be called out of here. But if if we don't see that, we're going to go by way of the grave. 
It's appointed to us to die. We're born dying. So we have to live every day to its fullest. Amen? And, and seek God. And I'm going to tell you, you do that. You set that dial. You set that thermostat. You set that direction of your feet, of your soul. And things are going to change dramatically. Will you suffer a little bit? Yeah. But Jesus said what? Take heart. Be encouraged. Take heart. I have overcome this world. I have overcome COVID. I have overcome geopolitical unrest. I have overcome every circumstance. I have overcome every problem that you could have created for yourself. (laughs) Come on. I have overcome. And because he has overcome, that is why you and I can be called overcomers (laughs) and have that life and that life more abundantly. Will you stand with me? Father, we just give you glory right now and honor in this place. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us through this year. Thank you, Father, that you hear our prayers when we call to you. Thank you, God, that you hear the repentant heart of a sinner and that your thoughts are toward them. The angels worship in heaven. When one lamb comes to you, God, help new destiny. Never forget why we are here. There is someone out there right now that we're going to come in contact with and they don't know. They don't know you, Jesus. So Holy Spirit, your word says that no man comes to the Father except by the drawing of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, my prayer is right now, Holy Spirit, prepare us to speak your word of comfort and salvation to a lost soul. Lord, prepare their heart for the move of the Spirit and the deliverance of your word through us. Allow us, God, to start winning souls for the kingdom in 2021. That 2021 will be a year of I will. I will give you the harvest. I will give you the strength. I will give you the answers to your prayers. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 2021 will be the year that we declare is the year of our Lord. Jesus, help us to walk in our ministries that you have established. No matter how great or how insignificant others may think it is, every single part of this body is important. The eye cannot tell the pinky toe that I'm not needing you. We need every single piece and part. We need every gift and every anointing in Jesus' name. And so this morning, I release you to receive your calling. I release you to accept it and to lay down the voices that are hindering you from fulfilling your destiny in Jesus Christ. No more devil. No more Satan. We are the army of the living God. Goliath, today I will cut your head off and feed your body to the fowl of the air and the army that stands behind you Satan you're nothing to our God and we're no longer going to sit and listen to you mock this church mock the church of the living God we are the anointed of the Lord we are his children we are a royal priesthood and we so claim it and we so receive it in Jesus name